Hello everyone, myself Dr. Ajay Kumar Gupta, Associate Professor, Department of CSC AI, IMT College of Engineering, Greater Noda. So today I am going to discuss some of the important topic of DBMS. Let's see what we are going to cover in today's lecture. First of all, an overview of database management system. Then what are the different components of DBMS? Then data abstraction or we can say view of data then schema sub schemas and instances then architecture of dbms different type of architecture of dbms we are going to discuss in detail in this lecture data independency and overall database structure now we start one by one first what is a dbms dbms is a combination of two word first is database plus management system or we can say DBMS is a uh, collection of interrelated data known as database and a set of program to manage these data. So this is the definition of popular definition of DBMS. Then next, what are the component of DBMS? There are four major component of DBMS which we are going to discuss in this. This system involves data. First component is data, the hardware. The second component that physically store data, the software that utilize the hardware is the third component in order to store the data and provide a method to retrieve or change the data. And finally, the user who turn the data into information. So here four component of DBMS is discussed in this topic. First is user. Then again, there are different type of user broadly classified in three category. First is application programmer. Uh, second is end user and third is database administrator. So end user, what is end user? End user is the person who is using the database or you can say access the database from a terminal using a query language or through application program. For example, if you are standing in front of ATM machine, so we are the end user and we are going to fetch our data from the bank server and we are going to interface with the database through the application program means the interface which we are going to see on the top of the ATM machine are the application program through which we can access our database in the bank server. And the third is database administrator is the person responsible for design, construction, and maintenance of a database. Means he is the overall person who designed the database, who decide the structure of the database, and finally database build on which user can work. The second main component is software. Software include the DBMS, operating system, network software, if necessary, and the application program. So the third component is hardware on which the software and data keep. So hardware, it can range from a PC to a network of computer. It also includes various storage device like hard disk and input output devices. And the last component is data. Data can be numeric data numeric floating point number or and non-numeric data, character data or logical data. So these are the four component, I repeat. First one is user, second one is software, third one is hardware, and the last one is data. So these are the component of DBMS. Next, here in pictorial representation, we have shown a typical structure of a DBMS where the three components are shown on the top we can see user or programmer then in between after that there is an application program or query this is a, again a software then dbms software software to process query public program then again software to access stored data so these are the software part of dbms and on the bottom where we have shown two cylinders it is a symbol of storage device where our actual data are stored. One is stored database and another is stored database definition that is metadata. Metadata is data about data means the data 
which are stored on the stored database, the definition of that data is defined in metadata. So here, this is a typical structure of DBMS. Then next, one of the next topic is data abstraction. What you can say, view of data. What do you mean by data abstraction? Data abstraction means hiding of data. We want to hide the complexity of data from different users. So this is come under data abstraction. So DBMS provide abstract view of data to users. That is the system hide certain details of how the data are stored and maintained. Generally, there are three level of abstractions means generally there are three level of hiding of data. First in physical level or we can say internal level is the lowest level of abstractions means we hide the lowest one. This level describe how the data are actually stored and describe complex low level data structure in detail. Then the second data abstraction is logical level or we can say conceptual level. Next highest level of abstraction describe what data are stored in database and what relationship exists among those data. Okay. The third one is view level or external level. It's still highest level of abstraction means we are going to hide the maximum thing in the view level because at view level who exists, their end user exists at view level. So end user don't want the detail of the uh, description of the data. So we hide the most of the complexity and we show only those field which end user required. We will discuss in uh, next figure also. The so view level is or external level is the highest level of abstraction describes only a part of entire database. The view level simplifies the interaction with the system. The system may provide many views for a same database. Let's see in a diagram. Yeah, this is a diagram where the three levels are shown at the bottom. There is a physical level where we can hide at the minimum then logical level the next level of hide is at the logical level and on the top there is a view level we can say we have different view of a same database as per the requirement of different user so we hide maximum at the view level as we have discussed earlier so these are the uh, data abstraction or we can say view of data next yeah next one of the main topic of dbms is what is the schemas sub schemas and instances our database is defined on the basis of schemas so let's see one by one what is the schema sub schema and instances so database changes when any information is inserted or deleted okay so whenever we insert any thing in database is a structure or we can say overall database will change or whenever we are going to delete something from the database again the overall database is going to be changed so what is instance first of all what is instance the collection of information stored in the database at a particular moment is called an instance of database what it means it means a pict this is a pictorial representation of our database at particular moment what is instance instance is the pictorial representation of our database at particular moment means it is a snapshot of a data what it is it is basically the snapshot of data then next is what is schema the overall design of database is called the database schema for example a student schema is name roll number class mark course department what it means schema is the overall design of the database or we can say if we are going to create our database in a terms of table so the table heading the table headings mean the uh, attribute names are the schemas of the table or we can say schemas of the database so what is schema schema is basically the overall structure of our database here 
we have shown an example of student schema. Means if we are going to build a database for a student, then what are the field we are going to choose for a student database? So these are the field we have chosen for a student database. So schema are the basically overall design of the database. Then uh, the schema will remain same while values filled into it changes from instance to instance. Means schema will remain same and the data inserted in the database will change whenever we insert or delete the data. Then the last is sub schema. What is sub schema? Basically, it is a subset of schema. So sub schema is a subset of schema having the same property that a schema has. Sub schema allows the user to view only that part of database that is of interest of him. Means we are going if there are different users for a same database. One user need only three table three attribute. Another user need four to five attribute. So sub schemas are the subset of schemas which the according to the different different users so these are the schemas sub schemas and instances then what are the architecture of dbms so architecture of dbms is broadly classified in two parts first is application architecture of dbms and second is schema architecture of dbms we will discuss one by one first we will discuss application architecture of dbms so application architecture of dbms again it is divided in two part two tier architecture and three tier architecture let's see one by one what is two tier architecture and what is three tier architecture two tier architecture in this architecture users are connected with database through network two different machines are used in two tier architecture as well as three tier architecture two different machines are used one is client machine on which the database user work another is server machine on which the database system runs we will see in the diagram also in two tier architecture the application is participated into a component that reside at the client machine and invoke the database system functionality at the server machine through the query language statement then Application program interface standard like ODBC means Oracle Database Connectivity and JDBC Java Database Connectivity are used for interaction between the client and the server. We will discuss this in detail in coming figure. Then what is three tier architecture? Uh, in three tier architecture, the client machine act as merely a front end and does not contain any direct database calls. Instead, the client and communicate with an application server through form interface. Then the application server in tune communicate with database system to access data. In this, the business logic of the application that is what action to carry under what condition is embedded in the application server instead of being distributed among multiple client. And the last three tier uh, applications are most appropriate for large application and for application that run on world wide web. What we have discussed in last slide, we are going to discuss in this figure. This figure shows uh, two tier architecture as well as three tier architecture. Left hand side shows the two tier architecture, whereas the right hand side shows the three tier architecture. What is the difference and what is the common between these we are going to discuss. So the common things are in both two tier and three tags. We have two machine. The upper one is client machine and the lower one is server machine. Again, on the client machine, the there are two, two things, user as well as application in two tier architecture. And in server machine, there is a database system and both client and servers are connected through network same in three tier architecture also the the upper one is user and user is connected to application client and then application client is connected to the application server 
in the uh, database server and application server is connected to database system. So what is the difference between these two? The application part. In Tuta architecture, we have only one application user interface with the application and application directly contact with the database system and fetch the data from the database system. Whereas in Theta architecture, this application part is divided in two parts. One is application client, which is in client module, and one is application server, which is in the server module. So when the user invoke the application client, so user what do? User filled a form. We have written that in three tier architecture, the client machine merely work as a front end. Means what it did? It connect with the uh, server through the form based architecture. Means it fill the forms at the uh, application client and it passes to the application server. The business logic exists at the application server. Means what action to be taken under what circumstances will be decided at application server and then it fetch data from the database and return back to the client machine. Most of the database nowadays work on three tier architecture. For example, if we are going to purchase something from Amazon, what we do? We fill a form on our mobile and send this form to the server. At the server end, the application server read the form and do the work accordingly. We fetch the data from the database and return back to us. Or we are going to uh, book a train reservation ticket from IRCTC. What we do on the client end, we filled a form. It is a form based architecture. We filled a form at client machine and we send it to the application server. And application server decide and it book a ticket for us. It stored the data permanently in the database and return the uh, service, return the ticket at the client end. So these are the two tier and three tier architecture. So the big large database uses the three tier architecture and all the worldwide web or internet based client server module work on the three tier architecture itself. So these are the uh, application architecture of DBMS, which is divided in two parts, the two tier architecture and three tier architecture. Another is schema architecture of DBMS. So here again, we are going to discuss the second type of architecture that is schema architecture of DBMS. There are three different type of schemas in the database corresponding to each view of database. First is external schema. It is external view is described by means of a schema called external schema that correspond to different view of data. Then the conceptual schema, conceptual view is described by conceptual schema which describe all the entities, attribute and relationship together with an integrity constraint. And the third is internal schema. Internal view is described by internal schemas, which is complete description of internal model containing definition of storage record, the method of representation, the data field and the indexes. Let's see in the diagram. So this is the schema architecture of DBMS, where at the bottom we have showed uh, the stored data and above that there is an internal schema means the actual data or we can say physical storage of data is done at the internal schema and at the conceptual schema what we did we decide or database administrator decide at this level we can say conceptual level what the data are going to be stored in our database so at conceptual level we are going to decide what data are going to be stored at internal or physical level, that data are actually stored and at the external view, external level, or we can say view level, we can view that data as per our end user requirement. Let's see an example. 
we consider example of college database schema so uh, we discuss from the bottom so at the bottom what it is it is a physical schema okay it decide where the actual roll numbers name address book number date of issues are stored so it's what it's so it is a, if we talk about roll number we say that for roll number we have allocated six byte and the offset the physical place from where our data is going to be stored is offset zero then name name for name we have assigned 20 bytes and offset is six because the physical storage of name is going to start from the offset six similarly address we have shown that for address <coughs> We have allocated 40 bytes and the starting address of our address is offset 26 then book number we have assigned byte 6 and the physical storage of book number is going to start from 66 onward so like this we have discussed the internal physically where our data is going to be stored is discussed at the internal schema then what is conceptual level at conceptual level what we are going to discuss the dba decide what database administrator decide what the data are there in our database for example here for college database if a d d database administrator decide that it is going to be stored roll number name address book number date of issue and return and DBA has to decide what the data types is going to be allocated for these attributes. So at conceptual level, it decides the types of attribute the, and the number of attribute and the data type of that attribute. We are at external level. We are going to, we are interested only for the attribute name. At external level, we are not going to be uh, in detail what the data type where the offset we are hiding these type of thing from the external level so if the external level user first is library user user two is account of a user user one is interested for required values are roll number name address and book number for account office required values are roll numbers name and fees so these are the uh, example of our uh, three type of schema architecture of DBMS. So here we have discussed two type of architecture of DBMS. First is application architecture of DBMS. Under application architecture of DBMS, we have discussed two type of architecture, two tier architecture and three tier architecture. Then in schema architecture of DBMS, we have discussed three type: external schema, conceptual schema, and internal schema. We have discussed with example also. Next is data independency. What do you mean by data independency? Three schema architecture provide data independencies. That is, upper layer are unaffected by change in lower level. What it means, we will discuss with the example also. So here, two kind of data independency is logical data independency and physical data independency. What it says, the logical data independencies indicate that the conceptual schemas can be changed without affecting the external schema and the physical data independency says indicate that the physical storage structure or device can be changed without affecting the conceptual schema let's see in the previous diagram if we change something at the internal level or we can say physical level means if we are going to change the roll number offset from 0 to uh, 10, you can say, or from 0 to 15, 20, and we don't require to change the conceptual level, then this is come under physical data independency. Means we are, we will changing the lower level and the upper level are unaffected by the change of the lower level. This come under data independency, means our data are independent. So there are two type of data independency. One is physical data independency and another is conceptual or logical data independency. So if we change at the physical level and the conceptual level are unaffected, 
then it come at physical data independency. And when we change at conceptual level means here at the conceptual level, we have role number, data type is number. If we are going to change the data type of role number and external label are unaffected with this change, then this is come under conceptual or we can say logical data independency, which here we have said logical data independency indicate that the conceptual schemas can be changed without affecting the external schema and physical data independency indicate that the physical storage structure or device can be changed without affecting the conceptual level. Then last topic is overall database structure. So this is a complex figure, but uh, we are going to discuss in detail the overall database structure. Which, uh, basically this figure, the yeah, overall database structure is divided in four part. The top one is the different type of user. The second is query processor. The third one is storage manager. And the last one is stored disk storage. The, as the, you seen that the last one, uh, the cylindrical shape. So cylindrical shape is the symbolic of a storage device. So here, the this storage. So we will discuss one by one all the thing in detail. So again, what I said that overload database structure is divided in four part. First one is user. Here we have talked about four users. First is naive user, second is application programmers, third is sophisticated user, and fourth one is database administrator. So we will discuss one by one in detail about these user. Then there is a query processor. Then third part is storage manager, and fourth is disk storage. We will discuss one by one. Yeah. Overall database structure can be partitioned in four parts. First one is database user. We have already discussed that we have uh, here, we have uh, discussed four type of user. First one is naive user. They are the end user basically. They are the user who interact with the system by invoking one of the application program that have been written earlier. Typical interface for new user is a form interface. For example, if we are standing in front of the ATM machine and we want to access our database, from the bank server, then we are the end user. We are going to use the form interface. We are going to invoke some application program on the top of the ATM machine. For example, we are going to withdraw money, one choice, we have we want mini statement, another choice. So these mini statement, cash withdrawal, okay? these are the uh, different uh, application programs which are invoked by some type of a form interface. Then second type of user is application programmer uh, who write the application program. Basically, these are the user who develop the application program. The third uh, type of user is sophisticated user. These are the user who interact with the system without writing program. Instead, they form their request in database query language means they are specific users who invoke the request through database query. They are the sophisticated users. And last one is database administrator. is a person with a responsible of controlling and protecting the data. It also coordinates the database design of implementation of data security procedure, protection of integrity of data, and so on. So this is database uh, administration. Second, what first part is a different type of user. Second part is query processor. Query processor helps in simplifying the database access. The query processor component include first one is DDL interpreter. It interpret data definition language statement and record the definition in the data dictionary. The second one is DML compiler. It translate data manipulation language statements in a query language into an evaluation plan consisting of low level instruction that the query evaluation engine understand 
a query can be translated into many number of alternate evaluation plan that all give the same result. DML compiler also perform query optimization. It pick low cost evaluation plan among the alternative. We will discuss in the figure the detail which we are discussing in this DML compiler. The third is query evaluation engine. It execute low level instruction generated by DML compiler. Then the third main part is storage manager. The storage manager is a program module that provides the interface between the low data st stored in database and application program and queries submitted to the system. Store manager translates various DML statements into low level file system command. This storage manager is responsible for storing, retrieving and updating data in database. The storage manager component include authorization and integrity manager. It shows in the figure. It tests satisfy of the integrity constraint and check the authority of user to access data. Then transaction manager. It ensures that the database remain in consistent state even in system failure and concurrent transaction ex execution proceed without conflicting. Then file manager. It manages the allocation of space on disk storage and data structure used to represent information stored on disk. And the last, buffer manager. It is responsible for fetching data from disk storage to main memory and deciding what data to catch in main memory. It enables database to handle data size that are much larger than the size of main memory. This is a basically the work of buffer manager. It provides the cache, cache memory. Then the last one is storage manager. In storage manager, implement several data structures as part of physical system implementation. There are data files stored, the database itself, data dictionary, stored metadata about the structure of database in particular schema of database and indices. It can provide fast access to database like the index in any textbook. A database index provides uh, pointer to those data items which hold a particular value. Let now discuss these all point in the that figure which we have discussed in the earlier. Yes. So we will discuss this in the figure. What is the overall database structure? We again come to the figure. As we have discussed that the different uh, overall structure is divided in four parts. First, the upper one is the different type of user. Then second is query processor. Third is storage manager. And the last at the bottom, we have this storage. Now, start one by one. We have shown there are four type of user. One is naive user. Another is application programmer. Another is sophisticated user. And the last is database administrator. If we start from naive user, what we do, it, it uh, interface with the application interface and then it goes to the query processor where in query processor, it talk to application program object code. Means when the user invoke an application interface, it converted to an object code and then that object code goes to query evaluation engine. Query evaluation engine, what do? It understand the object code and fetch the data from the storage device through storage manager. Means query evaluation engine understand the query which come from the upper end and it's fetch the data or store the data at store this storage through storage manager what what it interacts at storage manager it talk to buffer manager it talk to file manager it talk to authorization and integrity manager it talk to transaction manager so through this storage manager finally the query evaluation engine either stored or fetch the data from the disk storage similarly 
if we start from the top application programmer then application program what do it write application program when it write any application program what it do first of all it compile and linker in query processor first it is compiled when it is compiled again object code is generated and the further process of query evaluation engine and fetching and storing of data will be done in disk storage and storage manager similarly if the user is sophisticated user what it do it uses some query tools we have already discussed the soft sophisticated users uses some standard languages or we can say query tools when it is using query tools means it is going to manipulate our data somehow so what it do it uh, data manipulation queries are invoked through sophisticated user and again when this query is initiated then dml compiler required who translate this query uh, or we can say who compile this query and again a evaluation engine uh, evaluation the query evaluation engine understand that query and do the required thing in our disk storage through storage manager similarly uh, the last one is if, if the user end user is database administrator what is do it uses administration tool when it uses administrators tool either it goes to dml queries or it goes to ddl interpreter and uh, if it goes to dml queries then the path is again dml query to dml compiler then query evaluation engine and goes to uh, disk storage through storage manager and maybe dml interpreter directly talk to data dictionary and store the actual data in data dictionary which we are going to define the process so these are the overall database structure i hope it is clear to everyone uh, you can go in detail the these are the uh, sub topic we have already discussed in detail so thank you for today's lecture we will meet in some another lecture again